Hi, I'm Matt from Max Photographic, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set your camera up to make your shooting easier and for you to get the best image quality possible. Once you've given your camera battery a full charge, pop it into the camera along with a memory card. Your camera should now ask you to set the time and date. This is important as you can use this later on to find out exactly when you captured a specific image. Next, go to the Tools or Settings option in your menu and select Format. This introduces your card to the camera and sets up the folders you need to store images and videos. This also wipes any information on the card, so if you already have any images on there, make sure to copy them to your computer first. Now go to the menu and find the option to determine the image size. This should be set to the largest option possible to give you plenty of flexibility if you need to crop your images later or make any enlargements, but if you want to save space on your card, you can choose a smaller option. Next, select the file type. Most cameras give you the option to shoot JPEG and RAW images, or a combination of the two. If you want the images to be used straight away, either for printing or sharing online, choose the JPEG option. If you're keen on processing your images, however, and you want full control over all the processing options, select the RAW format. And if you want a version to use straight away, and a better starting point for any future processing, select RAW and JPEG, as this will capture both. If you choose to capture only JPEGs, you may have options such as Standard and Fine, which relate to the compression settings used. As a general rule, always pick the highest option, as this will give you the best image quality possible, although it will take up a little more space on your card than the others. Next, find the metering option. For most scenes, you should ensure this is set to the default multi-pattern. This will ensure the camera takes the whole scene into consideration when deciding on the correct exposure. If you're shooting a subject which is lighted differently to the background, such as a portrait, consider switching to the center-weighted option, as this will prioritize the exposure for the main subject. And if you're capturing particularly small subjects, such as a small flower against a background of foliage, considering switching to the spot option, as this will prioritize the exposure for a much smaller proportion of the frame. Now find your white balance setting and make sure it's set to auto, which should be fine for most conditions. Cameras do tend to struggle in artificial light, however, so if you're shooting indoors, think about switching to one of the presets, such as incandescent or fluorescent, which will help the camera out. Make sure your image stabilization system is switched to on, as this will help you to achieve sharper images when light levels fall and also at longer focal lengths. If you're using a tripod, however, you should turn this off, as it may affect the sharpness of your images. Set your ISO to auto if you're shooting in a range of conditions, as this will let the camera decide which option is best for any given situation. You may be able to specify a range between which the camera can choose. This is a good way of making sure the highest few settings, which tend to produce the most grainy images, are not chosen. You should only use these settings when absolutely necessary. Next, set your focus to the standard mode for everyday subjects, or alternatively to the continuous mode if you want the camera to keep a track of the subject that's likely to move. Finally, select the colour space. If you only plan on using images online, the sRGB option is ideal, as this will help to ensure your images retain pleasingly saturated colours. If, however, you imagine doing much processing to your images in a programme such as Photoshop, and potentially printing them too, choose Adobe RGB instead. Don't worry too much if you're capturing raw images, as you can always change the colour space later on. Check to see whether you have any noise reduction options in the menu, as these can help to minimise noise when shooting at higher sensitivities. You may have colour settings such as portrait, vivid and landscape. Switch to these when capturing JPEGs to get more appropriate colour. Finally, check to see if you can customise any buttons, as this will help you to quickly access the most commonly used settings. For more tips and advice, follow us on Twitter, Facebook or Google+, or visit wexphotographic.com forward slash blog.